Happy Saturday to you all. I hope everyone is having uh, an amazing weekend so far. And let's just right, get right into it. So um, this lineup is going to be a little bit different than my first look lineup I did on Tuesday. And um, right at the bats, the strategy is going to go back to the process this week. We didn't really do it last week. But this week, we're going to go back to our expensive running backs. Gurley, Connor, and Hunt. People are going to go something like this. I think they're going to leave off Hunt. And they're going to go Gurley or Barkley with Connor. And then they're going to pick up a cheaper a running back to play. They're going to go with Carry On, who's playing um, Seahawks. Now, they're in 24th. They kind of stopped Gurley. He only ran for 77 yards. Uh, I think he got three touchdowns to save him that day, but Karen Johnson won't get begin the touchdowns from close in. They might go with Lindsey, but I can't picture Denver keeping this game close. And they're going to go... No, they're going to go Chubb. So... I'm not going to try Martin either, Doug Martin either. Chris Carson might be a play for people because Detroit's abysmal rushing defense. But um, Pete Carroll has said that the Seahawks are going to have a running back by committee, and there's three of them. So it's Carson and two other backs. And even if the other backs get five to seven carries each, I mean, Carson's not going to get 30 like he did that one week. So I feel like instead of trying to guess what running backs are going to go off, just to plug in Kareem Hunt as your third running back with Gurley and James Conner. And at quarterback, I feel like people are going to go Aaron Rodgers. Or Goff. I had Trubisky in earlier this week, but to make the salaries line up, and you'll see in a second, go with Jameis. Now, the Bengals of... All the teams on this slate, the Bengals are have the third worst pass defense. Um, the Chiefs and the Buccaneers are even worse. I didn't like Dalton's game. Um, the Buccaneers give up uh, 360 yards per game on average and like 18 touchdowns, but the Bengals are not that far from behind, and they've given up 301 yards per game and like 15 touchdowns. I feel Jameis will be lower owned and he's going to have to throw about 50 times this week. They don't run the ball at all. So I think they have a really good chance. I think Jameis is going to lead the team in, in rushing this week too. So he might get a touchdown um, rushing, which would be awesome. But I think he's going to throw for 400 yards and two, three touchdowns in a year and one rushing for like 30 to 50 yards. That's great. So I think Winston, Gurley, Connor, and Hunt, that's going to make or break our day. Um, hopefully they'll make it. Um, the Steelers defense, I have the, the, the Browns, but it makes more sense. Uh, their numbers are pretty close. The Steelers don't get any interceptions, but they come away with a, uh, a few sacks a game. And going up against... This Browns team, the offensive line, they had seven sacks in the first uh, week. Uh, I feel like picking the home team defense uh, is the way to go for this one. So the salary doesn't leave us for very much. Uh, 4325 which is why I think everyone else is not going to have these three running backs. Um, but this is where we get creative. Tight end. I had Njoku, but I don't trust the Browns offense at this point in, in Pittsburgh. So I'm going to go with Chris Herndon. He's going to be like 5% owned. Um, he doesn't get a lot of targets. Let's see. I think he got like four last game, which is his most all year. Oh, he had seven and then two. He's not a lot of targets. But the fact of the matter is the Jets only have him and Jermaine Curse at very much uh, catching the ball. Unless they have um, their backup running back, Cannon, catching that. But they don't have 
anyone to catch it. Um, I feel like if the Bears' pass rush comes alive, Herndon is going to be up the middle. And for a rookie quarterback, the tight end is usually his biggest friend. So I think Herndon's going to hopefully... If Herndon can get 10 points, that's a win. If he gets 6 points, we're still fine. Um, so receivers, who's just at 4,800, is, is looking a little better. We can actually add a bigger name here at receiver. I'm going to add in Emmanuel Sanders. I feel like people are... I feel like Emmanuel Sanders is going to win uh, the cash lineups this week. He's going to put us in the money. Um, the last game against Casey only had 11 points. But I feel like he's him and Casey Keenum are... Um, they are a better tandem now than they were. And was it week four? Like four weeks ago? So if the Broncos have a chance to keep it close, they're going to have to throw it to this guy. Chiefs defense is better at home. Even in the blowout, you may not see this should get a lot of garbage time. A lot of garbage points. He's been pretty good lately. And 4,000. I feel like we have to go to Humphreys, which I had in my uh, first impression video. I thought people might go to Seth Roberts, but I've been toying with this. This is a hard decision we'll have to make on this lineup. No one's going to have Adam Humphreys, which is... It might be good, it might be bad. Um, he's had a ton of targets since Winston's taken over. He's had 13 targets. And let me just plug him in real quick. And I don't like doing this. I don't like putting, you know, having to rely on one team to do well. Like, I didn't want to rely on the Browns last week. A lot of people had a lot of Browns. Um, between Godwin and Humphreys. Since Winston has taken over, well, the last two weeks, because I don't count that Bears again that he took over in the second half um, in Mop of Duty. I don't count that. So the last two weeks since Winston has taken over, Adam Humphreys and Chris Godwin um, have been targeted 28 times, which is good. Uh, yeah, you might want to be like, hey, Brian, what about Mike Evans? What about Deshaun Jackson? A lot of people, a lot of videos I saw had Deshaun Jackson in them. Well, over the last two weeks since Wentz has taken over, Mike Evans and Deshaun Jackson have been targeted 29 times. So just one more time than the guy won in Humphreys. It saves us a lot of money. Um, if you want to somehow expand your lineups and get Crabtree, I love Crabtree. I feel like Crabtree's going to be heavily owned. He's good for 12 points. Jordan Nelson might be good. Another idea I was toying over was Martavius Bryant. Um, I don't trust Derek Carr. Yet, I don't trust their line. Don't trust him. Don't trust Gruden. Calling a good play calling in that game. Don't trust him to have a good game plan yet. But my Chiefs Bryant could have seven and twelve points and be fine. The Colts don't really have a great pass rush. But something about this Bengals and uh, Buccaneers game. The projected score is fifty three and a half. Something about this game. Um, I feel like it's going to be a shootout. Also, Fitzgerald would be a great GPP play. I don't mind playing him in cash. If somehow I could bump up Humphreys for Fitzgerald without having to um, go from Gurley to Saquon Barkley, I would put Fitzgerald in. Um, I feel like they're going to throw more his way. I think Fitzgerald would be the sleeper GPP pick. Will win someone a lot of money. Jermaine Curse is the only receiver out there. Um, I wouldn't go this way and a lot of people aren't coming he might be a good GPP pick. GPP pick as well but I think Chris Godwin he's you don't want to rely on touchdowns but he's been a touchdown machine Winston's targeted him six to nine times um, oh also about this Adam Humphreys pick he's like I guess most of the time or half the time I don't, know. I don't really watch Buccaneers games he's a slot receiver though and I do know the Bengals slot cornerback is going to be out. He's hurt. So he's going to be up against a backup. And if he goes three for 40 for seven points, that's a win. As, I mean, I've had receivers get shut out and I still play some cash. Um, I don't think he's going to get shut out. I'm not going to win real quick. But um, this line from the Browns, perfect. Four for 37. He might... I think between him and Godwin, one of them are going to break 
um, lose and score a 40 or 50 yard touchdown. I feel like that's going to be the case. I think Gower's going to, uh, going to catch. Gower, I think, is going to catch a red zone touchdown. A, a red zone touchdown, excuse me. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is what I'm going with. Um, hopefully, it's going to cash. And But I feel like if you want to swap out Gurley for Barkley and have play with an extra $1,000, um, unless Gurley goes for over 40, I think um, they'll have a comparative day. A comparable day to each other but I don't know I don't I don't want to play anyone against that skins defense right now even though the game's in New York um, so yeah uh, if you have any questions or comments please comment below please subscribe if you haven't done so already I'm gonna talk a lot more daily fantasy sports and we're gonna get back into um, shooting short films and talking about cameras and gears so if you want to be entertained as well as informed, please hit the subscribe button. Always click that like button, smash it right now as I'm talking. If you've stuck around this long, it'll only help and improve um, the channel. And yeah, I wish luck to everyone tomorrow, and hopefully we'll all be in the money. Awesome. Have a great weekend, guys.